putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Mrs. Merkel, well, she's been around a long time. She certainly, uh, in terms of uh, current contemporary European leaders, has more authority than all the rest of them, although she's made some pretty big, major, historic errors herself. But, but, I think Mrs. Merkel is more likely to listen to the voice of German industry and listen to the voice of German workers. I do not believe this European Union is going to be there in 10 years' time, and I do think something much better and more constructive can take its place. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Uh, that was Nigel Farage. He was invited by, and it was funny, I saw the article, and it said he was invited by like a woman who's a descendant of Hitler. <laughs> and it's like, what's that got to do with anything? She, she didn't kill six million Jews. So everybody in Hitler's line now are tainted by Hitler. I mean, what do you say? I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer didn't have any kids, but what about all these serial killers or these other bad men of the world? Aren't we all in some way connected? God, can you just say Farage went to an event that was a, where they spoke about the European Union and Merkel came up? No. More fake news. Oh, the woman who put on the event and invited Farage is the great, great niece of Adolf Hitler. Heil Hitler. You know, as if everybody associated with that now is tainted with the, the scourge of Hitler. It's ridiculous. Which brings me back to what we were talking about earlier, which was the, uh, this compilation we did of fake news during and after the election in some cases during, you know, it could be it involved a lot of different things. And we covered, you know, Slate, Salon Magazine, CNN, whether it was Russian hacking, it's impossible to hack us. Oh my gosh, we were hacked. Donald Trump won, you know, or interference. Look, nobody covered the interfe- Nobody even brought up the idea that Hillary Clinton said, I got all these world leaders that want to see me in office. Where are those emails? Give us those communiques. Then let Mueller go look and see what they did to influence the election. What did Hollywood do to influence the election? How many movies did they try to make where they beat up on Trump? Michael Moore made a film, the film that they wouldn't let come out about Hillary. I could go on. How much influence did they have? Every award ceremony. Did Donald Trump get equal time, if you will, to to the Hollywood bashing? What about the media onslaught that we're talking about right now? If it weren't for Donald Trump defending himself, we folks don't have Gorsuch on the Supreme Court, whoever else comes next. We don't have our trade deals. We don't have Carrier as a company remaining in the United States. And I could go on. We don't have any of the good things we have. We don't have a stock market shooting through the roof. We don't have jobs reports. What's the latest unemployment? 4.4. It teeters between 4.3 and 4.4. And let me tell you, folks, it's only going to get lower. It's only going to get better. It, the way that they measure the unemployment rate as it is right now, don't be shocked if that number goes down to 3 even under 3% under Donald Trump. But I want to go back to this flip-floppy media. And you guys will know some of this because the media hates Donald Trump and they hate you. The media hates us. Check out how Washington Post, Jeff Bezos' rag, depicted Comey only months apart. When they rightfully thought that Comey was in their corner, They accused Republicans of a witch hunt against him. Then when Comey covered his butt in the whole Hillary Clinton email thing, then the Democrats abandoned him super fast. But here's the, here's the actual article. July 6th of 2016, Republicans attacked Mr. Comey for doing his job. And then October 29th, of 2016 James Comey is damaging our democracy now they went from saying that we were attacking and Republicans were attacking Comey for doing his job to attacking Comey for doing his job (laughs) 
And that's what cracks me up about the left. I don't even think they see the contradictions. They look at, well, he was attacking. They were attacking him when he was helping Hillary Clinton, but he's no longer helping Hillary Clinton. So now, you know, we got to attack him. They never see it. Then we have the two-faced political theater, theater rather, of a lady by the name of Sally Cohn. And I don't know if you know her, but she's a political pundit, gay chick, you know, always dresses mannishly, whatever. But when Democrats do things, they're okay. Not so much when Republicans. So here was a tweet she had, uh, four sixteen, four six of seventeen, and but here well, I want to do the earlier one. Uh, this was on eleven twenty one thirteen, November twenty first of thirteen. GOP repeatedly went ballistic, so Democrats went nuclear. One party had to act like grownups and govern. Thanks for standing up, Democrats. And then. On 416 of this year, April, are we really surprised that after Democrats didn't use nuclear option, Republicans did perpetual high road, low road distinction? So she's now saying the Republicans took the low road to use the nuclear option. But when the Democrats did it in 2013, High praise to the Democrats for finally acting like grownups, letting government do what it does. Man, folks, no exaggeration. And I'm not going to go through all these, but there has to be 50 examples that we could talk about. There's more than that. But I'm saying when we start looking at this, there were dozens of examples, probably hundreds, if you just want to spend the time. Here was another one. What did the media say when President Trump did exactly what Obama did with the uh, U.S. attorneys? And here's one example. So the, this was in, uh, I believe, the New York Times. Josh Gersten. And he said this was in 515 of 09. Barack Obama plans to replace a batch of U.S. attorneys in the next few weeks and more prosecutors thereafter, according to Attorney General Eric Holder. That's the first sentence of the article, Obama to replace U.S. attorneys. Here's what he said when Trump did it on 3-10 of 17. Trump team oust Obama appointed U.S. attorneys. The president had previously asked Preet Bahara, the U.S. attorney in New York, to stay on. So Trump oust Obama appointed attorneys. Obama replaced to replace U.S. attorneys. Now, you may see that as, come on, Kevin, that's no big deal. That's nuanced. One makes you feel like the other guy kicked out the other guy's attorneys. The other looks like business as usual, which is what it is. When a new president takes over, he kills all the baby lions in the pride. He's not going to raise somebody else's little chariots. That's what they do. Trump did what every other president has done in modern history that said, ah, I'm going to get rid of all the other guys stuff. I don't want their political ideology. And the only time you've seen that change not occur is if it was a Republican or, you know, a Democrat following a Democrat or a Republican following a Republican. And even then some of those guys still did it. So what are they talking about? Why are they making controversy where there is no controversy? And who can forget, folks, the Democrats with the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare. It would be a travesty, travesty rather, if we were to lose it, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back to paying $600 a month for my health care versus the $1,600 a month that I currently pay. Oh, and I just got a notice that said, Kevin, at the end of October, your coverage is gone. So I've got one option now to go with. But it late. They gave me through the end of October. So Obamacare is imploding on itself, as it should. And we've been talking about this, not because Obama's, you know, black. He's a colored feller. No, because it stinks. But look at how former DNC chairwoman Donna Brazile reacted to Obamacare when it impacted her. This is what she said. Uh, second anniversary of Affordable Care Act, ACA, Obamacare for critics, health, hashtag healthcare works. Just ask millions with coverage. That was 23 
March, uh, March 12, uh, um, 23 March of 2012. On 27 February of 13, what's on your menu? Just got off the phone with my health care provider asking him to explain why my premium jumped. No good answer. Now that's the difference, folks, between us and them. She's now, what happened? You know what happened, Donna Brazil. You opted for Barack Obama's nonsense and you got it. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.